is episode 67. And uh, this week, Trash Can is back. Thank you, Trash Can. There we go, a little Trash Can sound. Um, no Scott. No John. Because having a full cast is not in the cards for us lately. But we are joined by the only guest host in Blade Job history, Matt Willis of The Matt Attack. Matt, welcome back. Thank you very much. My first hat trick of appearing on someone else's podcast. Thank this you very much. This is a hat trick. This is the third time. This is great. I've, I've now appeared on Blade Job more than I've appeared on MGB. Believe it or not. That's that's actually pretty impressive, considering you're, you might as well be the executive producer of MGB. I've never had anything to do with MGB, ever. I've, I've, you um, know what? I I've, think the M should stand for Matt now. Sorry, Mason, but... Matt, but episode forty it did. But <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, that, I'm uh, welcome, yeah. welcome to episode sixty seven of the Blade Job. Uh, follow us on Twitter at the Blade Job Show. I might as well, I guess, give shout outs to these assholes. Follow Scott at Blade Job Perkins. Follow John at Blade Job J Olin. Follow the veritable, wonderful, and metallic Steel Trash Can at Steel Trash Can. And of course, Matt, where can we follow you? You can uh, you can follow me at Matt at UK. Um, you can find a plethora of shows I'm on through that. Through that, I've yeah, got, you, you, I'm you, all, I'm to all of that. So it's fine. You, you made you made very clear that you do a million podcasts while I can barely do one. And that's I, fine. I produce I produce four and I co-produce a fifth. So that's not too bad. Have you done um, why we watch yet? I was episode one. You were episode one? I can't keep track because I still haven't. So I refuse to be on it until uh, Mike returns from his hiatus because I want the true experience. No offense to Mags, like I love him, but I want the true Why We Watch experience. And He might be waiting a while then. I know, I know. And, and regardless, I mean, you know, pers- personal things aside i do want to say congratulations to uh to mr mr mike for uh, uh, uh potentially welcoming a, uh, a a new member to the family i think i heard um, I, I have heard the same and i would also love to offer mine and chris's congratulations as well yes children they're a thing that i have no intention of ever having to deal with but, I can't say the same for me or Chris, but we're still early in our relationship, so... You, you never know, man. You never know, you know? Like, I'm sure you got a lot of love to give, and, uh... I'm, 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 I'm not gonna continue that part of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super uncle, and I like that. So. You know what? That's, that's, you know, sometimes you gotta be super uncle, sometimes you gotta be a guy who just avoids children entirely. It happens. But but what we're yeah. really here to talk about is pro wrestling because that's supposedly How, what the show is really, about. Really, again? I know, I, I know. I really wanted to I do can. something different, but I guess we should keep talking about what we talk about normally, which is wrestling. And there's a, a lot has happened. And actually, this is I I didn't even think about this. It's um because I mean I messaged you ten minutes before we started setting everything up and was like, hey, do you want to be on the show today? So there was really no planning involved, but you were at WrestleMania 35, and you were at WrestleMania weekend with the different independent promotions. So let's just start out with that. Let's start out, you know, this was not only your first WrestleMania, but it was your first trip to the U.S. It was. It was indeed. It was my first time outside of Europe. Um, I absolutely loved it. So much so that I'm coming back in November. Um, but it's for holiday. It's not wrestling. So, I mean, you could just start wrestling people on the street. That's, that's how we do it in America. Mm, yeah, but I, I, I'm not bringing my belt with me, so I can't defend it. So no, that's true. I mean, if it's not a title match, it doesn't matter. No, uh, according to the WWE universe, at least. Absolutely. If it's not for a title, people don't care anymore. So it's all good. So I mean, we'll start with the big one. You know, so WrestleMania 35, obviously. Yeah. That's the you know the the granddaddy of them all. That's the biggest wrestling show of the year worldwide. I mean, no yeah. offense to New Japan, but Wrestle Kingdom may be huge. 
it's not WrestleMania. It's WrestleMania, love it, hate it, indifferent. It's it's the biggest wrestling event on the planet. Um, w- how was your experience going to, to WrestleMania, going to a 12-hour wrestling show? Well, it wasn't quite 12 hours. We were only in the stadium for seven. So, um, but even so, um, the seats were good. We were better than we expected. We could see the ring. We could see um, the pyro. Well, we certainly felt the pyro. We were, we were really close to the pyro. Um, we could see the um, all the boards and everything. It was great. The atmosphere was fantastic. We were right next door to the station. I couldn't see because of the lights. Shouldn't do any other match. Okay. That was right next to our section. They were shouting, we can't see, we can't see. Now, the people behind us shouting, we can't see, we can't see, because they had an obscure view. So, like, be grateful sort of thing. But apparently, Alton actually complained during the match, saying, turn the lights off, the people actually can't see what's happening. You're blinding them. <coughs> and they did. Apparently, they, yeah, they, they did. And they, I, I was, I was actually wondering that while I was watching that people started cheering at, yeah. at nothing. And I assumed it was your typical WWE audience where they were just bored. So they decided to cheer at a guy dressed up as Hulk Hogan or some shit like that. No, um, they cheered because the lights went from yellow to red. And then they did, they cheered for that a second, about five, 10 seconds later, they switched them back to yellow again, right in their eyes again. The boo was deafening, worse than anything that's, I'd heard for Roman Reigns. That's uh, that's and that's what I was wondering too, because I remember <laughs> I remember and the boo starting, me. and then Orton kind of looking around like, "What's going on?" Um, and I, I I remember on on SmackDown two days later, him walking out the entrance and shine, uh, shading his eyes from the light, going, "I can't see, I can't see," and and I thought that was a neat little, uh, especially from. Yeah. Heel Orton mm. is really good at just like mm. messing with the crowd. Yeah, but at the same time, that absolutely he, he is absolutely bang on the nose. I mean, he's the one who could turn that sort of thing and make it into something. Yeah, but no, the know. atmosphere itself was amazing. I mean, you hear stories about um, like people kicking up a kicking up ruckus, there being incidents. You hear about all these like idiots but over here in the UK when you get like people go to like sporting events and being idiots. You know. Yeah. Well, the queue for the bathrooms was ridiculous. Yeah, um, for, for, for the American audience, queue is like a line. Okay, just, yeah, just so everyone knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what, there's two there's side sidebar. Um, really good thing about um, about America um, is you don't know how much we moan in England. There's two things we're good at in in England. It's moaning and queuing in a line, basically. And the reason why we queue is so we have a good moan about it. Anyway, so fair that, enough. Okay, yeah, but, but yeah, but the the line for the bathroom was, was massive, and Graham had to go after I did. Um, so I was waiting outside with my title belt on my shoulder, and I must have had like seven or eight people come past me saying, "Hey, champ! Hey, champ! <laughs> hey, champ!" It was great, and there's one guy had the old attitude era belt on his shoulder. Yeah, and I asked if I could hold it for a moment, and Felt weighty, but mine was way heavier. And I was like, "Whoa!" They used to use a lot lower quality <coughs> for for the replica belt. I have, a, I have an old um, ECW World Heavyweight, and the plate is heavy, but the belt itself, compared to my WCW World Heavyweight Championship, it, it's a completely different feeling. It's a completely the, different weight to it. The price is as well ridiculous. I mean, the price for the WWE new. Um, you, um, undisputed belt up there. You see it? I can see it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's that belt cost me four hundred and twenty-five dollars. Right? Yep. Now, when I was at the G One the day before at Madison Square Garden, yes, I am name dropping. Um, the IWGP Heavyweight Championship belt was available to buy. Guess how much it was there? I'm going with three hundred and seventy-five dollars. Five hundred dollars. That makes sense, uh, and and the reason I think that makes sense is because the IWGP belt is like multi layered while still being a solid piece because it has those like silvery bits and it has those golden bits. Whereas yeah. like a lot of the WWE belt, especially because they're mass produced, they're yeah. just like mold, 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 go. Mm, um, I got the last WWE title belt 
at WrestleMania. I bought the last one on the shelf. That's awesome. I was so chuffed. I was so chuffed. So um, and seeing as I was going by the IWGP price, the fact I saved 75 bucks comparatively, I was like, yes. Yeah. And then we're sit- and then we're standing there, and one of the adverts that ran were like, like today only money off um, championship title belts, and I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" <laughs> yeah, no, that, that uh, I think it was last year during WrestleMania. I ordered. Uh, mm. It might have been the year, but it was the year that Shane did the cell bump. Uh, WrestleMania thirty two. Yeah, so I ordered the. Uh, the white uh, baseball jersey that he wore to the ring. Yeah. And two hours later, all WrestleMania gear went on sale 20% off. And I was heated. Thing is, Graham looked at how much it was. I'd have saved $18. Yeah. 18 And that, eight. but, that, but that wouldn't have been, that didn't include shipping for me. Oh, true. Cause you're shipping to the UK. Mm-hmm. So, so I was so I paid four hundred twenty-five bucks, maybe a missed out eighteen quid, but I went home with dollars in my pocket still. Literally, I go back to the UK and I still had, I still had about thirty dollars in my pocket. Nice. I was quite happy with that. I was happy with that. No, I, I'd be pretty happy. I remember uh, my WrestleMania mm-hmm. experience. I came home with debt, um, and that was it. I just owed money to people. Oh, I still haven't paid Graham yet, but at, at the time of recording, I haven't anyway. But I will be. I, but Graham be very nice about that, and I'm paying him back. So, um, yeah, he wanted me to have a good time before I paid him back. So, yeah, well, you know, what? thank you, Graham. Thank you, buddy. Graham Best of fun. the MGB podcast, good cop, a bad cop podcast, and I'm sure another project, uh, 205 Live, 205 Year Old Live. I will and- never be able to say that the first time. And um, free RD pod as well. Oh God, I can't. I can't keep track. And he complains about me. You guys are crazy. Like I, I, I think about doing my show and I get stressed out. And if I thought about doing multiple shows, I, 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 I don't know if I can handle it. And I'm gonna be at EGX in October, in November, in October as well. Yeah, doing. I'm do, I'm, yeah, me and me and Alex are going to be at EGX in London for four days. That's awesome. It's insane. Chris is hoping to be working it as well, so we'll all be there enjoying some amazing video games for that. Can't are wait you, for that. Are you just attending, or are you guys <laughs> planning on getting a booth or something? No, we're just attending. We've okay. just got past. We've got it's seventy five pounds for four days or That's twenty. Nuts. Or twenty four pounds per day. That's not bad at all because we have uh, locally we have uh, packs in Boston, yeah. and it's fifty bucks a day. Or oh, is it is it higher? I'm getting trash cans telling me it's higher now. Sixty five dollars a day, or like a hundred and eighty or something for the, the yeah. three or the four day pass. Um, I remember the first year, the first couple of years, it was only like 25 bucks a day or something, maybe 30. Yeah. Um, but now it's like, I got, I was lucky that I was gifted a, a, a Friday pass this year for PAX. Um, but, but off topic, off topic. Anyways. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So you also, so, yeah. I mean, most people probably saw WrestleMania, um, but you went to some other things during WrestleMania yes. weekend. Let's, yes. let's, let's, let's chat about those for a moment. Sure thing. Um, yeah, I took in Shikara for the first time. Um, it was pleasantly entertaining. I thoroughly enjoyed it. We had the balcony seats for this one. It was a really good view. We got in there and there was a title belt hanging from the rafters when we got in. So we knew we'd, so we were like, ladder match. I've been, wrestling fan since like year 1999 2000 i've never seen a ladder match in person and it was brutal it was absolutely brutal ladder I love matches it. are a lot of fun i think my i think the only ladder no okay and at the pg show as well shikara so when it when the um when the ladder broke the whole crowd started shouting holy poop holy <laughs> poop Holy poop. Ch- Chikara it's, it's fans great. Are, are really good because Chikara has got its own, like the whole comic book motif of Chikara mm-hmm. is just, it's so unique and it's so fun. Um, I was going to say, I was actually lucky enough where I think my first ladder match that I saw live 
was at Money in the Bank. Um, That's a pretty strong one. Yeah, it was it was the one where Seth Rollins won. Um, yeah, with that insane superplex uh, with him and Ambrose off the uh, the tall ladder. Yeah, um, and then it was cool because I was there when uh, Seth Rollins won Money in the Bank, but I was also there when Seth Rollins cashed in Money in the Bank at WrestleMania 31. So, so it's, you in San Fran then? Yeah, yeah, it was it was great because we got to see his entire run as Money in the Bank. Essentially, we saw him win it. We saw him use it, and I thought that was really cool because it's not like they were both in Boston. You know, one was on the other side of the country, and it just happened to be that was the night he cashed it in. And you talk about loud pops when they turned off the lights. I think the loudest pop I've ever been been uh, been to live was Seth Rollins' music hitting at WrestleMania 31 to cash in Money in the Bank. The biggest pop at WrestleMania. Mm, it's close between Kofi and Seth, but Seth, that pop was unbelievable. Oh yeah, and, and the thing is, like, it's it's weird because you know, not to move away from the Indies back to WWE for a second, but of course, yeah, yeah. But you know, with uh, WWE fans, and I'm not. This isn't like WWE fans. They so, like I'm just saying, like you know, fans of WWE. They have such a short attention span. We've been harping on and on and on about Seth Rollins needs to win the belt. Seth Rollins needs to win the belt. He deserves it, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then a week after WrestleMania, people are like, oh, fucking Seth Rollins. It's like, this is what we we no longer have a part-time champion. We have someone who's yeah. going to be here week after week after week. It's who you wanted. Why are you upset with it now? It doesn't make Absolutely. sense to me. It, it, why can't we just enjoy We have nice things right now. We have a WWE champion who deserves it more than anyone on the roster. We have a universal yeah. champion who deserves it. We have a classic tag team uh, champions in in the Hardys. We have yeah. classic uh, uh, a throwback tag team with uh, the Edgeheads. You know, with um, with Ryder and and Hawkins. Um, and Hawkins. Becky Lynch is a dual champion. Like, this is a really great time for champions. I mean, we have a you've lot got, of great got, champions. Actually, having said that, the um, slightly, we've had the new, the new SmackDown of oh, um, women's tag team champions from like, from SmackDown, the Iconics, of course. Yeah, they got a massive pop when they won. Oh yeah, and WWE would not have put Kofi on next if they'd known that. No, not at all. They're not, they're not trying to spread their pops out. That pop was deafening. Honestly, Billy Kay anyway. and Peyton Royce are <coughs> extremely underappreciated. I think by the wrestling fan base, they're not the best. And it's not because they don't have the talent. It's because they don't get as much time to hone their craft. They don't mm. get as much TV time as, as the other women or the other men. So, so... Now that we're seeing them more regularly, plus the SmackDown after WrestleMania, we got to see um, Miss Chris Statlander get a tag title shot on SmackDown. Yes. And I am a huge Chris Statlander fan. Um, so Graham turned me on. He's like, please tell me you watched it. And I had him. Yeah. So he said, watch Graham, that match. Graham lost, his, Graham lost his bag sure shit. That would be probably PG and not at the same time. That's really weird of me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Be wrong. So anyways, yeah. let's go back. But, so but Chikara, yeah. Chikara was a good time. Chikara was a good time. Uh, Black Label Pro had some great matches, but the seats we had weren't the best. We learned from the f- for future, don't sit on the stage at Black Label Pro. You just won't see anything. Okay. Um, but that's, but it was, it was a good show for out, for out Swoggle with Nick Gade was insane. Um, Alley Cat won a battle royal. That's great. I love Alley but, Cat. But that the best part was, um, we were front row. The GCW presents Orange Cassidy is doing something or nothing, which is taking which took or something or whatever. Sorry, for uh, we took over from where the Nova Pro were going to be, of course, and of yep. course Nova did Nova obviously folded, so they stepped in, and it was a, like a Nova Pro love letter. It was. Um, they had a, a Swamp Monster um, Lumberjack match. 
Um, Ali Cat, we she came out, we petted her, we threw our dream of the ring. She put her, mine in her mouth. That's not euphemism either. Um, she and she and she she was fantastic. Um, oh, Ali Cat's oh, Ali. wonderful. She was amazing. She was amazing. She she won both matches I saw competing. And yeah, I'm a big fan of Ali Cat. I can't wait to see more from her. Um, I'm a little upset that she um, obviously I understand why we going Nova and everything like that they made, they made it perfectly clear that one come back to Nova I also got to see Jordan Grace yep and then after she um, won her match at Black Label she came and sat on the stage and she was literally one row in front of me and I was like Graham should I ask her for an interview and he said don't you bloody dare <laughs> It, it, and that's and that's something that I really love about indie yes. shows in general. Like you know, yeah. obviously I go to Beyond Wrestling shows a lot, and it's cool to see that you know after their matches, you look over near the entrance or you look over near the the VIP seating, and you see a lot of the wrestlers just hanging out and watching the matches. And you know, it's cool because you see a lot of guys who are just like, you know, guys and girls who are just like, all right, I did my match, give me my money, I'm out. Like, yeah. you know, most most of the people excuse me, especially the main, the mainstays, they hang around, they watch the matches, they interact, you know, it's, it's really fun to see. And I'm glad that, um, fame hasn't gone to, to Jordan's head and that she's still, you know, I'm a fan kind of thing. And she hangs around and, and checks out those matches instead of just hanging mm. out backstage. Well, it was, it was Jonathan Gresham match. Of course they're married, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Gre- well, Gresham did a did a dive out of the ring, but his legs caught the rope as he was diving out, and he went head first to the floor. Ugh. And she jumped up so fast, I was like, as we all did, to be fair, I was like, oh, he was fine, but I'm like, oh shit, yeah, not. That's good. always scary to see too, especially you know with someone who who does a lot of high flying mm. when they when they just something goes wrong South. and. You know, it was like, uh, you know, going back to WrestleMania, like when Brock threw uh, Seth into the side of the ring and you could see his head hit the metal bars underneath it. And it's like, uh oh, you know, this can't be good. Or a uh, number of maybe two months ago, a month ago, when Ciampa powerbombed Sheamus and he landed directly on his leg and his knee bent yeah. in the wrong direction. Y- you hate to see that. You it's it's you don't want to see that happen to anyone especially a performer that you like, you know, that's just, that's, that's not a fun thing to see. Um, so, so you didn't go to raw or SmackDown though. You no. when Raw started, I was on the plane heading home. Okay. So, um, yeah, you know, you can't win them all. No, no. But I had had a blast over there. Capital pro was also great on the Sunday morning before WrestleMania. Cause not only that, not only did I get to see, Another death match I was expecting to see. This is a death match at the middle of the day. Okay, yep. we're talking twelve o'clock. There were kids in the front row. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that this was appropriate for the show. It was being advertised in a church hall, basically. You, I'm not entirely G- Jesus sure. Jesus loves death matches too, man. I'm like... not entirely sure because it was advertised as family friendly, and this was not a family friendly show. It's it's my per- it was my personal opinion. I don't think it was a family-friendly show. It was a good show. I enjoyed the wrestling, apart from part in the intermission where they decided to do a comedy, um, you know, a comedy de- like battle thing, you know, the, a burn battle. Okay, yeah. sure. Some of the jokes were terrible, and they weren't they weren't clean. They weren't funny. Seriously, I've heard funnier jokes told by Jackson and Mason. No offense, boys. But, well, I mean, yeah. Jackson and Mason are very funny guys. Yeah, but they they um, they were they were better. They really could have put them on at half time. Really funnier. <laughs> um, but I also um, took that opportunity to go and do my interview with Jackie Buckling that day as well. So I've interviewed them, and that's coming out a few weeks about a week's time. It's an absolute blast to do that. It was. Um, we're not even talked about the fact that. Uh, uh, MSG, I went to the G1, of course. The G1 Supercard. So this is something that I was really interested in. Um, mm. Now, I'm not 
I'm not the biggest Ring of Honor fan. I'm not the biggest New Japan fan. I love pro wrestling, so I have yeah. nothing against them, and I enjoy watching them when it's, you know, good for me. Like, I'm not going out of my way usually to watch their shows. Um, All In was was a, was a an example of something that I wanted to watch just because it was a, kind of an experiment. Um, and the same thing with uh, Wrestle Kingdom when it was uh, Jericho versus Omega. Like, I, w- yeah. I went out of my way to watch that. But other than that, like, I'll watch individual matches online. But, I mean, how how was that? Because this is kind of like Ring of Honor's, like, coup de grace, uh, so to say, because this 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 is the biggest thing I think they've ever done. Well, I – the whole thing was overshadowed because of what happened over the Barclays Center at the same time. Um, the Hall of Fame, what happened with, with Brett. Yeah. As G1 Supercard was trending number one worldwide. And then what happened to Brett happened. Yeah. And that was trending number one. And G1 Supercard went from saying trending number one worldwide to just trending worldwide. Yeah. Because unfortunately, all anyone want to talk about was the fact that Brett had been attacked. By some um, shithead. It, yeah. It wasn't, it didn't go down well at the, yeah, people people were like they trying to find anything on Twitter and weren't paying a hundred percent attention to the matches. Yeah, and then <coughs> unfortunately for Ring of Honor, they ran the angle of Enzo and Cass showing up, which I think went over like a like a wet sack. Well, it didn't. We didn't know what was happening up in the crowd. We couldn't see properly because the TV feed was being shown on the big screens, obviously. Mm-hmm. They weren't showing what was happening. And I spoke to Conrad Newton, not Conrad, 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 but Conrad Newton, um, and he was like, what was happening? Because TV feed didn't mention what was happening. Like, oh, Endo and Cass turned up. And they're like, what the fuck? I'm like, exactly. But one of the best parts of the night was the pre-show Rumble match they had. Mm-hmm. Number 30, the great Muta turned up. I've never seen an arena erupt like that before. <laughs> and, and I was it- like... I got a witness of Muta, the great Muta on a, my first ever visit to America. That's Amazing. Awesome. That's that's absolutely fantastic. I mean, it, it's we're reaching a point where I mean, obviously, it happens every generation where you know the the older guys are kind of winding down their careers. So I like you know Jushin Liger. You know, yeah. this is this was probably your only chance to see him because he's done as of January. You know, yeah, I me mean, Thunder, Thunder Liger versus Muta. I'm like, yeah, what the fuck? You what know. the? This is, a, this is something that people have been dreaming about for years. <clears throat> I mean, I'm personally dreaming about seeing Kairi Sane versus Charlotte Flair. I can't wait to see that match. We saw a brief prelude that and rumble this shit. I yeah. can't wait to see that. But um, yeah, back to topic. Um, the um, triple threat ladder match for the Ring of Honor World Championship. That was amazing, but most people were more concerned about the fact that a ladder flipped into the crowd. Yeah. Um... From what account, the guy was okay, but um, but the crowd was also charging, that's a lawsuit. That's well, a lawsuit. It's, it's no more of a lawsuit than when Brock Lesnar threw a card door into the crowd. Oh, no, agreed. Mm. Just saying that that's, yeah, like, mm, yeah not great. But it was it was a that was a it was an absolute blast. And then the best part about it all is, of course, um, Jay White was in the main event and lost his championship. Good you bag of dicks. Yeah, but but I think, but I think like, much as you say that about him, I know nothing about Jay White apart from the fact that you call him a bag of dicks the whole time. Um, I do know that Akada put on one hell of a match with him, and it takes two to have a great match. And this was. It was a late, late night finish for us. We, were, me and Gray were knackered at this point. But I tell you what, it was. I, I, this is gonna sound really bad, but I was starting to like nod off in my seat in MSG because of how late it was, and my body still didn't acclimatize properly. And it was a long night, but oh my god, a card I mean, and just the experience in general. A, I mean, of being able to go to something white. like that. Yeah. Jay White and Okada put on a, a potentially um, show stealing match, and that's something I know you're not going to like me saying. But Jay White takes two of a good match, and he did a good job. Yes, on his, oca- on his I, occasion, 
You did a I good job. I will give you that it does take two to tango, but someone's got a lead. Oh, absolutely. And that was Okada. And maybe mm-hmm. so, but it, but so, he's still got a bump for him. He's still got a sell and everything. It was true. It, the, true. I mean, that, that, that tombstone that Okada does, unbelievable. <coughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, WrestleMania weekend was amazing. The drive home, the drive back to the airport was interesting as well. You'll hear parts of that as we start releasing that um, on weeks. We get busy. You'll love that. I have four hours of footage to, to finish going, going through still. Not all of it's broadcastable. <laughs> what? Sorry. No, I'm getting... I'm the, the the trash can in the room is is shaking. I didn't I didn't know what was going on. Anyways, um, so okay. yeah, no things happen. We'll just we'll just pretend this part didn't happen. Um, okay. Uh, so something that I really wanted to talk about because I knew that cool. Scott wanted to talk about this, but then Scott didn't show up to recording. So I'm going to talk about it without him. I'm going to talk about it with you. Um, okay. Speaking of New Japan, one of the most iconic tag teams of recent history in New Japan pro wrestling was War Machine, which right. was Warbeard, Hansen, and Raymond Rowe. Great. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Uh, Warbeard, actually a, a local boy for us, uh, got his start up here in, in chaotic wrestling as Handsome Johnny. Uh, and then made a name for himself all throughout New England as just the man. Yeah. Not to be confused with Becky Lynch. No. Um, I'm the man. She is the man. And then they signed with NXT, which is fantastic. I was so happy when they signed with NXT because, honestly, both of them well-deserving. And they changed their name to War Raiders. And they were just Roe and Hanson. I'm okay with this. I'm 100% okay with this. But this past Monday, they debuted on the main roster. Yeah. As the Viking Experience, Eric and Ivar. I have a problem with this. um, Anyone who listens to Good Cop, Bad Cop, and I'm hoping you all do. uh, All four of you. Um, Hey, you're almost up to seven like us. Yeah. Um... I mean, I was talking about the four of your of your of your listeners because obviously I'm just the guest here, so I'm probably bringing your listening figures out a bit. Um, yeah, the um, I don't watch a lot of NXT, but I've heard of the War Raiders. I've obviously I've heard of them. Yeah, um, and I knew better. They were the NXT Tag Team Champions. Uh, when the Viking Experience debuted on Monday Night Raw, um, Cody Cody Rhodes, Corey Graves. <laughs> Um, acknowledged them the, the Viking being as the reigning NAT Tag Team Champions. So I was like, we must have beat the War Raiders then. That's what I thought in my head. I didn't know that it was the same team. And that's that's a I massive don't NXT. That's it's a massive fucking issue. You can't debut a team who's active on one brand under one name and then active on another brand. I mean, I get it that on NXT they'll probably be the Viking Experience too now, but still, like. I don't think they will. This is a whole... Well, they've probably already taped episodes that include them as War Raiders. This is a horrible, horrible experiment of how to call someone up, especially someone who's so iconic. They've gone through their... It's their second name change in two years. It it was different when WWE ran something along the lines of um, FCW. Okay, Before it became... it, It was fine when that... Because it wasn't broadcast. People didn't know what these gimmicks were. It was designed to literally be like a little territory sort of thing. So you could work on something. And then it, you get caught was, in the main I roster think... and you get a package to go with. I'm pretty sure it was uh, it was broadcast on local television in Florida. And that was as yeah, far as it went. Exactly. If that. But you can't then go from that to this. And I'm like, this is fucking stupid. I mean, No, it is. As you'll listen to, if you go, back, if you, I'm sure that you will listen to it at some point. Um, I was bad cop this week, and I was like, the Viking experience. What the actual Matt attack? It's 2019. 
I can actually picture. I mean, can you do a Vince McMahon impression for me? I uh, know that only Scott can. Okay, well, I'll do my best. Yeah. I'll, do, I'll do my best Scott impression of Vince McMahon. Okay, <clears throat> this is how I imagine the backstage conversation was. Paul, 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 I got it. Vikings. Really? It's 2019. Well, the biggest issue is they're already Vikings. Like, that's already their gimmick. All you're doing is, like, okay, I have a story. I have a, a personal story. Um, when I was very, very young, yeah, it may have even been before I was born, uh, my my parents got a cat. My my uh-huh. My father named the cat Dog, and he wanted to name the dog Cat. And my mom drew the line at, at, at a dog named Cat. But we did, in fact, have a cat named Dog. <laughs> this is all true. This is all 100% true. I believe true. you. You and, can't make that stuff up, is why. And, and <coughs> that's pretty much, I feel like, what Vince McMahon goes, wait, hold on. They're, uh, they're Vikings? Fuck it. The Viking party. Viking experience. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. Like... You're just drawing attention to the gimmick. This isn't 1989. We don't... This is this is on the same level as Dr. Isaac Yankum to me. It's such a blatant fucking just, oh, that's what it is, so just call it what it is. You know, it, it makes no sense to me. You've taken... Like, okay, and, and, and I want to preface everything with, you know what? If this was, for some reason you know, Hanson and Rose idea. Mm. Fine. Like great. Yeah. But this has Vince McMahon written all over it. And and it makes no, you know, that triple H is just like massaging his temples backstage going, I, I, don't, I, don't, know, I, I don't know what to do. Uh, Stephanie, uh, I need a blowjob. Like I, it, it's just, it, it makes no sense that you would take this iconic team this is like AJ Styles debuting as Aaron Jones. Like mm. it, it was is it Aaron? I think his first name's Aaron. Uh, I'm not sure of your fair. I'm never Graham told me before, but I've got my face yeah. in and out. It, it, it's just it, it it makes no sense. I mean, they may not have the longevity of their career of AJ Styles of uh Tommaso. No. Champa and Warbeard started around the same time. How come Champa and Gargano were coming to the main roster uh, under their indie names? How come Ricochet is coming to the main roster under his indie name? But we can't even keep them as Hanson and Rowe. Like, if you want to call them the Viking experience, fine. But why hmm. do we change their names? Team names I can't can change. That question. It, it, but, but. Changing a character name, a performer name, it just doesn't make sense to me. Especially where, like you were saying, with NXT now, there's there's exposure. People know who they are. People know what their moveset is. They know what their gimmick is. They know all this. And you bring that in and you slightly alter the gimmick name without altering the gimmick. And then you change the character names. It, it's a mess. It just doesn't it make is. sense to me. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm just bitter and old at this point, but God um, damn it. Does you're not old weird. yet. I don't know. I feel old. My back hurts. Eh. I need a nap. Napping? Maybe really? Some Metamucil. Maybe, uh, maybe some prune juice. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. But regardless, it, it, it's just... Why? Mm-hmm. why? I, I just I want someone to answer me why. You know, I want uh, maybe I'm going to pose this this question on Twitter of just why why do you as as a person like if you were in charge of like what what's the one thing that would make you okay. So let's take the mad attack. Yeah. So you've been you've been running this podcast for a year. Uh, a year? Okay. So so we're at a, we're at a, we're at a year. And you decide that you're going to go to a new podcasting network. You're going to go to a, a new mm-hmm. network and they're going to have the Mad Attack on there and you're like, "Hey, I've got 
X amount of listeners. I've got X amount of downloads. I've got X amount of viewers. And they're like, that's great. We're, we're happy to have you on board. But we want you to change the name of the show. Mm-hmm. And we want you to change it to the, the, the Steve Willis experience. And you're going to go, oh, wh- why? Like, like, what can be the, the idea behind that? Because you lose all marketing. You lose all branding when you change something like that. Well, I have to say, maybe it's slightly different for me because I have told him I know certain terms. Uh, fuck off. Yeah. But then I get that because, but because I... What you... I mean, yes, when you ha- listen to my shows, you get the dial and you turn it up to 11, and that's me. Yeah. That's, I turn it up to 11, and that's the character I play. I mean... K Fabe on the table for a second. One thing, yeah, I like Finn Balor. Two, his abs don't really do it for me. Really? Okay, K Fabe out the window. I like Finn Balor, but he's not the guy in my dreams. <laughs> nah, I'm dating the guy in my dreams. Aww. And that's, that sounds really corny, cool, really cheesy. The guy I'm dating is the, is the guy I want to be with. I don't. Why do you need to go out and have a burger when you've got steak at home? Anyway, that's, that's, that's beside the point. Um, I could go for a burger I, so, right now. Oh, don't start. I'm hungry myself. No. Right, we were, so you turn with Doctor Eleven from a mat attack. So you get the character the, the, at full blast. Sure. But uh, that is, it may be a character, but at the same time, that is me at the core of it. Yeah. Um, and if you want me to play a character that's not me, that's fine. But that's not that show. So, if it was me, I'd have... I well, mean, granted, Vince is paying them a lot of money. I'm doing this for free, so... Well, in, in this in this scenario, we're not changing the show. We're not changing the content. We're just changing your name. Mm, no, because it's Matt, not Steve. So, Matt, was, I'd still say no. It, 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 but, and and you're, you're, you're seeing how little sense that would make for you. And yeah. this is on such a small scale. This is but internet the fucking same wrestling time. podcasting. And but now we're talking same... millions of dollars. Yeah, same time. If Vince McMahon is saying, your contract here says I can do that, probably. And I'm like, they're being repackaged for no reason, basically. That's And, and, that, and that's the point. It's like, we we're just repackaging them because we can now i've heard rumors that it's because usa doesn't like war they don't want war in their name and that's fine that's absolutely fine but why change their names why change hansen and roe to eric and ivar ivar whatever Mm. the fuck it is it just doesn't make sense i mean the bludgeon brothers were still called rowan and harper yeah they repackaged the team, but they were still hmm. Harper and Rowan. But now, like, th- this just, I don't know. Th- Having said that, if you look, look at Los Matadores and the uh, the Shining Stars, the Colognes, whatever you want to call them, they've been through so many gimmick changes. My goodness. I don't think I've seen any, t- any two wrestlers go through me gimmick changes as them, and none of them have worked for them. Uh, Vince, I agree. Vince. I actually, I, I, this might be unpopular. I really liked the Shining Stars. I uh, thought that was entertaining. This, yeah, I'm gonna say this very, very simply, Vince McMahon. And like, if you listen to me, if you don't agree with me, Vince, fight me for some of 36 if you want. Seriously, that's me for an open challenge to you, Vince. I don't you, care. You, you heard it here, folks. The open challenge: Matt Willis, Vince McMahon, WrestleMania 36, Tampa, Florida. Be there or be square. Yeah, I said that. What up? Go ahead, Matt. I'm sorry. I'm not scared of Matt. I'm not scared of Vince McMahon. I am absolutely mad attacking serious when I say this. Vince, you have sometimes got your finger on the pulse perfectly. Kofi Kingston going at WrestleMania. Brilliant. Absolutely fucking genius. The next night on fucking Raw, no, 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 week and a half later on Raw, bang. You've shown both your insanity and you listen to the fans in equal measure. You are a complete lunatic. And if for no reason for that, you deserve a fucking dick punch. 
I yeah no Vince definitely. I mean he has a uh, he has those cojones. You know you might have yeah, to hit well, him pretty hard. Well, as a chef, I know how to bust some grapefruits. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, it, it's just I don't know the the whole thing is weird. The the whole. I mean, I'm not even going to get into the whole superstar shakeup. I think it's the worst idea. I think the draft made a lot more sense storyline wise. You are um, from your that one, but you don't have any general managers anymore, so it almost doesn't make sense to do a draft. I get that, but the whole shakeup thing. Why can't we just have? Since there's no more general managers, what's to stop someone from leaving one brand and showing up on the other? I mean, there, there there's no. Like, there's no authority figure except for the McMahons again. Yeah. And they're barely involved. Triple H was only around to do his feud with... um, Batista. With Batista. Shane's only around to continue his weird feud with The Miz. Stephanie shows up every now and then and says, you know, Welcome to Monday Night Raw! Yay! And then everyone cheers and she goes, I invented women! And then everyone goes, What the fuck are you talking about? And then Vince shows up and literally does the exact same thing every week where he goes, uh, mm, and, uh, mm, and, uh, your, your opponent is, uh, Kevin Owens. You know, he just does the same shit where he just kind of like feigns like he's, he's trying to reveal something, but there's no anticipation because he stumbles over his words because he's in his seventies. It's, you know, it's no offense to Vince, but. Maybe being an on-air character isn't in the cards for you anymore. Maybe no. being an on-air character, maybe you should leave it to your son-in-law who's, you know, really, really good at what he does. You know? Yeah, as proof, as proof of NXT and the fact that he made 205 Live worth watching. Yeah. You know, he took 205, which was essentially a failed experiment, and mm. he turned it into a legitimate competing brand Albeit it's just kind of like a side brand is not on the same level of NXT SmackDown or Raw. It's, no, of course not. It's its own but little it's still side brand. Something I'm happy watching. Yeah. I like T Twenty Five Live. As proven by the fact of when you when you can get they mind how little attention a five year old can hold for that yeah. amount of time. If you can get a five year old to not only watch it but do a podcast about it. True. That's, of course, 205 Euro Live with Jackson and Graham. Uh, Find them on Twitter at 205 Euro Live. Absolutely. I mean, um, this is a ridiculous thing. How can it be so great and so poor sometimes? It's 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 weird because WWE as a whole is fractured. Because you're right. Gargano versus Cole might have been one of the best matches, technical matches, I have ever seen. But then we I get... I won't dispute that. You, you see that match, and we saw the... And I saw the gif before I saw the match. I saw the gif of the kick as um, um, the jump off the ropes. Yeah. And that... The gif went round, obviously, like crazy. It was fantastic. Um, something the View from Top Rope Boy said... Um, it was a great match from Cole and Gargano, but neither of them, it was their best match they've had, in yeah. their opinion. And then we just told that opinion. And then you get Uncle Dave, who I will not, who will not give the um, acknowledgement of his full name because I'm still bitter about the way he, he grades wins matches still. He's also a um, piece of shit. That's the politest way I've ever heard someone describe I'm him. I'm sorry, fucking piece of shit. Thank you. Right, yeah, he's um, a disgrace to the industry, in my opinion. But the fact, he, the fact that he's got a five star rating system, and he's he gave this one five and a half stars for a start. But I know he gave a match in New Japan seven stars. I'm like, people now are just waiting for for, for the first ten star match. And I'm like, what it does, is it makes every other match that's come before it completely meaningless and pointless. Mm-hmm. I mean, off the top of your head, I mean, the greatest match I've ever seen in wrestling history was TLC two. That's my personal opinion. Okay, yeah, no, and and you know what? That's definitely high up on my list. Absolutely, TLC two will never be bettered as a TLC match. And when you've got six people in perfect harmony mm-hmm. through the whole of that match, there was only one mistake. And that was when um, Jeff did the Swanton Bomb 
onto Rhino and Spike, one table didn't break properly. And but even then, it was still a spe- spectacular spot. It was. And when they had the four tables outside the ring, which Bubba, which Bubba Ray and Matt went through, JR got his words all mixed up. And but all four tables actually broke. And if memory serves me, that's the only time when they've had that spot. They've done that spot a load of times. All yeah. four tables outside the ring. Yeah. It's the, only, it's the first time they did it. And it's the only time all four tables are broken. Yeah, no, I I think you might be right, because when when Taker and Edge did it, I think two of the tables, they missed them completely. Yeah. Um, Which, much to the chagrin of, I'm assuming, Undertaker's shoulder as he hit the ground, but, you know, it happens. It's a high-impact sport. I don't know if you knew this. Oh, absolutely, and it it, it just, so many things that bug me about, about Meltzer, and I refuse to acknowledge his star rating system i mean why do people care i mean like he's like like i've got backstage information i'm like that's that's the thing like, that's have, the problem what, his look, rating what system annoyed, what annoyed me so much about it is that it says former wwe employee dave Meltzer says this i'm like if you were that valuable to the industry you'd still be fucking working for him exactly and and that's the thing is his rating system doesn't affect me in any way his rating system is arbitrary and it's irrelevant. The issue is people, fans, who take it as gospel. People who yeah. look at it and they say, this is an important thing. So I look at it this way. Um, I don't know. Let's say I'm just going to throw out two random names. Um, Joey Ryan and Colt Cabana have a match. Uh-huh. And yeah. obviously, it's probably going to be comedy themed because they're both comedy wrestlers, but they're both also very good, talented yeah. wrestlers. Yes. So, Uncle Derv has a fucking hissy fit, and he goes, "This isn't wrestling. I love Jim Cornette's dick. I'm gonna give this negative twelve stars." And all of a sudden, like, since fans take him as gospel, they're just like, "Oh, well, Joey Ryan and Colt Cabana are not good wrestlers." Okay, that's just a lie. Then the fans don't want to see them, so the promoters don't want to book them because why would we want to book people that people don't want to see? So now they're losing bookings. This is now hurting their careers. This is taking money out of their pockets, out of their families' pockets. Yeah. This is a problem now, and I think that's the issue with Dave Meltzer. Yeah, I said his name. Dave Meltzer. Dave Meltzer is a piece of shit. Dave Meltzer is hurting the business more than he is helping it. His star system is pointless. It's arbitrary. It's his fucking opinion. And that's what people need to do. If you run a podcast, if you run a show, if you run a website, if you write blogs, if you write for someone else, I don't care what you do. If you are involved in the journalistic, quote unquote, uh, aspect of professional wrestling and you are just retweeting or reposting or reblogging shit that Dave says, you are doing a disaster service to yourself you are doing a disservice to your industry you're doing a disservice to the people who actually listen to you because that is not your opinion that is his opinion and his opinion is worthless because he doesn't care about the performers anymore he cares about clicks he cares about clickbait he he's he's useless i don't care about his opinion. And if you are just going to regurgitate his opinion, I don't care about you. No, Period. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Absolutely. And if that offended someone out there, maybe one of our friends uh, within the podcasting community, uh, the, what was it, Potter and Family? Is that the hashtag that goes around? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's cute. Whatever. Um, I'm sorry, but I want your opinion. I want time to name drop. I want Warren Hayes' opinion. I want um, Kelsey's opinion. I want want Matt's opinion. opinion. I want Mags, Mike, Graham, fuck, Jackson and Mason. You know, like, I I, I want the opinions of the fans. Um, Amy, uh, what's, oh, shit, what's the name of that? Uh, Den, Dragon's Den. Is that the name of their show? Yeah. I want your opinion. I want the opinion. uh, Take the bump. Daily Smart, um, shit. Is it over yet? Like I, I don't know. Uh, we can yeah, name Conrad, all- Newton, We want, we want yeah. all these people out there who give the opinions to give their own opinions. We do not need you to take the opinion of someone 
who is so far up, he, up Vince McMahon's fucking ass, he can go fuck himself. Literally. He's, he's fucking himself by fucking Vince. Vince is fucking him. It's a fucking circle. It is a yin and yang of fucking. And got, it's not got, helping that, anyone. That, that's an image like, oh, Jesus Christ. That image, that, oh, my God. Thank, thank that image. And that's the reason why, and I apologize for all the swearing, Graham. I'm away listening to this show. That's the reason why MGB, they don't do WWE anymore, more or less. They, they focus more on the indie stuff. And great, I love hearing about the indie stuff. It's fantastic. That's what WWE has done. That's what you've done, Vince. Vince and Meltzer. That sort of thing has turned the youngsters onto the indies. Now, that's great for us. We love the indies. It's stuff. great we for the indies. Them. We love indie wrestling. That's where all the talent comes from. I saw something on YouTube earlier, which had CM Punk versus Eddie Guerrero versus Rey Mysterio. I watched that match a couple of years ago, and mm. it, it looks weird. It looks weird. That mysterious mask on. It's it's very it's a strange match, and honestly, it's it's a testament to all three of those those guys and how good they really are. Yeah, it is when I saw that show up because someone posted uh, a post posted <laughs> uh, about it and about uh, how him and Ray ran that match and Eddie was like, "Yeah, you know, just let me know what's going on at, during the match," oh, and that's Eddie how good was, it was. You could tell that Eddie wasn't fully there still. No, that Again, was after, that was his after, his six months after you know during the time when he was fired from WWE. He was only yeah, on the Indies tell, for like a year. Yeah, but before you could he tell went that back. he. You could tell that he was um, recover- in recovery, is what I'm saying. He, he, was. Tell that he, he was. He he was he, he was still good, but he was just a step behind where he was when he got back, sort of thing. Yeah. But that's, that's understandable. Well, that, that, that shows you that even not sober and even in recovery of injury, drugs, alcohol, whatever it may be, of how good Eddie Guerrero was. Absolutely. If he was <laughs> fucked up, he was still better than 90% of the roster. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, I've been to, I'm going to do a quick total back to my head. I've been to one, two, three, four, five, six WWE shows live. Okay. I want you to list some WWE um, legends. I'll tell you when I, if I've seen them and where I've seen them for the first time. When? Some legends? Um, yes. For example, Eddie Guerrero, I've seen him. I saw him in 2003 in the WrestleMania uh, Revenge Tour. Okay. Uh, oh, God. Um, am I allowed to say Chris Benoit? Yes, you can. Chris Benoit. Same event. Same event. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. The Radicals. Um, no, it was 2003. This was, this, is, this was a Benoit versus... It was Benoit Cena that night. It was. That was a oh, classic. Damn. Oh, yeah. But the normal Cena I noticed as well. Okay. How about, uh, tch, 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 let's see. Um, man, I'm having trouble thinking. Uh, okay. Damn. Taz. Taz? Uh, no. I've not seen Taz. Um, Just I love Taz. Taz. I miss Taz. I do too. Um, he was he was actually one of my favorite wrestlers growing up. Oh, um, I love I loved his his short run stint with, with Spike Dudley. I thought it was great. Yeah, like I I remember like because I was an ECW fan in the the mid nineties yeah. too. Um, because I found uh, when I found them on a uh, hardcore TV uh, before they had uh, they had their TNN show was on one of yeah. the local access channels at like two in the morning, and I yeah. found that so I would tape it. Uh, if I had to go to school, or if I if it was on a weekend, I would watch it live. Or not live, live, but you know. Yeah, and I, and I um, mean, yeah. You know, and, and and so I mean, I was lucky enough to get turned on to a lot of these guys before they hit WCW and WWE because yeah. I was one of the few. Not many markets got ECW, but Worcester was one of them for some reason. And yeah, I got awesome. I got I got to see WWE ECW um, yeah. back in back in two thousand nine. But it wasn't the same, obviously. But it was, I, did, I did get to see it, but I can't remember anyone who's on that show. Which says a lot about ECW back then, unfortunately. Uh, WWE, ECW? Yeah. You've never seen anyone who was on that show? I did, but I can't remember, I can't remember who was on it. 
Well, that's, that's that- the thing is a lot of the people that were on WWE CW weren't ECW guys. They were just exactly. – it was developmental for them. It was CM Punk. It was uh, Shelton Benjamin. I think Bobby Lashley uh, got his Lashley. start in WWE ECW. Yeah. But then they brought in, like, Big Show and shit. And then they put the championship yeah. on Vince, and they ruined it because, you know, that's what Vince does. Yeah. But, but yeah, um, back to business. Come on. Come on. Come on. Give me a few more names. See if, see if I've seen them or not. A few more names. Um, Kevin Nash. Uh, no. Uh, Scott Steiner. No. <laughs> he was. I, I saw the SmackDown brand when it came over that year, so he was on the Raw brand. So I didn't get to see. I didn't get to see Steiner. Ooh, let's see. Let's think. Um. Oh, hang on. I did see Kevin Nash WrestleMania thirty-five. Oh yeah. Too. So, there you go. Kind of, yeah. He didn't wrestle, though. No, but I've I, I seen him, so... But you saw him. Physically saw yeah. him. Um, yeah, he was, he was looking at you. Let's think. I'm trying, I'm trying to go obscure. Uh, Rob Van Dam. RVD. Um, nope. He, not, he wasn't in WWE at the time. When I was when, in 2009 and 2003... He was on the uh, Raw brand, so yeah. I think I Not saw him Steve. at a Raw in 2003. Actually, now that I think about it, yeah. Oh. The tag has the chains. Gosh darn it! Yeah, I just PG'd this up. Oh. Uh, well, I can tell you, I haven't. I've never seen um, Austin. Oh, okay. Mm, I've never seen Rock. Yeah, how about Booker T? Booker T only at the Hall of Fame thing this year. Yeah. 2000, yeah. I didn't see, see him before that, unfortunately, because he was in TNA at the time. When he when last time I went to CWE Live. So, yeah. Kurt Angle I saw for the first time this year. Team yeah. Angle I saw back in 03, but not Kurt Angle. He was really? injured at the time. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I've seen Lesnar more than I've seen uh, Angle. Interesting. That's disappointing, but interesting. I saw Lesnar against Big Show for the WWE Championship in an untelevised match, and he F5'd him with ease. It was, it was good. It was great to see. I saw. I, I went to a house show that had Big Show versus CM Punk in a ladder match. Uh, not ladder match. I'm sorry, a lumberjack match for the WWE Championship, uh, and it was uh, uh, one of the. Um, uh, the Lumberjacks was an as of yet unknown Dean Ambrose uh, before, <laughs> before he was before the shield existed before all of that he was back when he was wearing trunks that had just had razor blades on them uh, what about uh, Ric Flair ever seen Ric Flair wrestle uh, now, notice I saw, said wrestle never saw him wrestle no um, 2009 at Raw uh, no 2008 at Raw it would have been 2008 at Raw um it was the couple of weeks after um, Michael's retired him. The music goes off, and we all think he's there, and Jericho walks out. Because Jericho is the greatest of all time. Mm. All right, so this is gonna be a this is gonna be a rapid fire one, and these are all individuals. So don't don't uh, don't don't try to pull no bullshit on me. <clears throat> okay. Mankind. No. Mick Foley. No. Cactus Jack. No. Dude Love. No. You have lived a sad life. <laughs> no. We, he retired before I start before I before no, I no, got no, no. pressing over it. Mick Foley never retires. Mick Foley didn't retire until the doctors told him he wasn't allowed to do it. Anymore. As in he doesn't do house shows. True, true. Over here. So WrestleMania 35 would have been a good chance to see him. He gets the big shows and things like that. He he's does doing more... um, he's doing that tour uh, about the guy who's doing the spoken word about the Undertaker's career, and that's going to be in the UK. Yeah, I'm um, a little bit. I don't, I'm not going to go and watch him. Bro. I'm not going to watch Mick Foley because he went back on his word. So we all know why he went back on his word. Mick oh. Foley, thing, hardcore match. I'll meet you in the street, mate. Right. Um, you could probably take would... it at this point. 
my knee's about the same situation. My Achilles is probably in the same situation. His knee is probably in his life. In his life. I'm <laughs> respecting the world for him, but yeah, he made a, he made a promise and he's gone back on it. So, so you're, upset my, with, you're upset with Mick. Mm. I'm upset with Mick. I'm upset with Mick. Yes. I'm upset with Mason. I was told he would be on my show, but for some reason his dad won't let him or something. I don't know. Well, it might have to do the fact that you curve like a sailor on shore leave. I most certainly fucking do not. This is a PG family fucking show. Scott, tell me something. Scott? No. John? No? You know, no Trash one fucking Dan, showed help up. him out here. But you know one showed up, but we've had our time. So the one person who did show up, Matt Willis of the Matt Attack, the Matt Attack Army is running wild not like Hulk Hogan because he's not a racist. But Matt, thank you very much for joining us. Um, this was short notice, and I appreciate you sharing your stories from WrestleMania weekend. I appreciate you ranting about the Viking experience, and I appreciate you allowing me to say really horrible things about Uncle Derv. Oh, that's an absolute pleasure on all three counts. You know me. I'm happy to come on and you know talk more because you know I don't do nothing on the other four and a half shows I do. Um, am I going to plug them real quick? Plug away, my friend. Plug away. Right. Okay. Okay. Let's start off with Saturdays, which is um, gaming day for me. It's the gaming podcast with Matt and Alex, or it's Chris Talks Games. Um, I want to be on both of those, by the way. <laughs> Guaranteed you will be on the gaming podcast with me and Alex at some point. Can't say for about Chris because it's kind of a silly thing for him. But we do collaborate all the time anyway, so you never know. Uh, you can find Chris is Chris at Chris Lewis thirty seven. You can find uh, me and Alex at Matt Alex Game Pod. Find Alex on Xbox at Spiderbread. Find me at the UK on there. We'll game with anybody. Just let us know who you are. You're welcome to come and play with us, whatever you like. Right into our gossip. I do have Zarte CM play about Formula One. Leave it there. People that like F one, I get that. Right now, the wrestling stuff. The Matt Attack Podcast, the Friday for every WWE pay-per-view, where I have a, a panel to discuss the pay-per-view coming up. The best we one act- you ever did, by the way, was your Hell in a Cell 2018 podcast. I mean, yeah. you had such a great panel on that one. You are kind of biased on that one. Um, I'm not I did- biased at all, sir. You are, little- you are a little bit biased, unless of a sir, I'm 34, not 90. Right, okay. Um, the best one I ever actually did was the Mission Chamber, when I got a perfect score. Um, well, going with this, yeah. Uh, that's that math bat attack. Next show will be um, uh, Zachary Shiloh um, and uh, Josh from Wrestling Reverb, I believe, um, joining me for that one. It'd be great. And, of course, every Friday, you also get me with Graham Bagshaw um, for the Good Bat. Good Cop, Bad Cop Wrestling Podcast at Good Bad Wrestle. You can find us every Friday talk, um, shooting the good and the bad. And, of course, then you also get me against Jackson, the game, usually. Uh, you get our open agendas and, uh, obviously, the now world-famous Devil's Advocate, which Ryan actually is pretty good at doing, we found out. Oh, yeah. No, I love cutting promos in general. And I will, <coughs> I will argue about everything all the time. I... I have very strong personal beliefs, but I'm also the kind of person who will never push my personal beliefs on anyone because well, everyone's me, different. But well then let me well then let me let me give you a on the spot devil's advocate to do then then shall I? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm gonna steal it. It's, it's, it's <laughs> and I'm gonna post sec- it. It's no, no but what I mean, <laughs> it's twenty seconds. Um are you ready? This is uh, your devil's advocate to do, okay? Hold on, hold on. Let me take a let me take a drink first because my uh, my throat. Okay, I shall fill for time right now. He doesn't know how bad it's going to be, guys. He thinks he can defend anything. I want to see him cut this promo and actually do a good job. Are you uh, ready? One caveat has to be wrestling related. I am not getting into anything political. Oh, it's wrestling related. We only do our DAs on wrestling related stuff, so that's fine. <clears throat> but okay. devil's advocate for you is. Hmm, Jay White is my new hero. He is not a bag of dicks. I am. Go. 
Jay White, the former IWGP heavyweight champion, perhaps one of the greatest heavyweight champions of all times, is most certainly not a bag of dicks. In fact, I feel like I'm a bag of dicks for never giving him the credit that he deserves for being so talented in the ring, so talented on the mic, and a testament and time. to that championship. That wasn't too bad. I it was pretty good, actually. I was saying it for Christmas for you, but I probably will cut this audio out and just to get a Christmas cracker at some point. <laughs> you can do that because I'm probably uh, I'm. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm I'm doing some stuff. You know that we're experimenting with this episode, and and the fans will see how we're doing uh, uh, some experiments. So I'm gonna wait until probably after the episode is available as a full podcast. But we are gonna have some stuff going on on YouTube uh, involving this episode, and you should definitely go check that out if you made it all the way through. Great. Yes. If you didn't, you're not hearing this, but you're seeing me post ugh, post this stuff on Twitter. Um, We've we we're doing something new. I'm staring directly at the thing that we're doing right now because I'm not going to be using this. So this isn't weird. It's a little weird though. But yeah, Matt. Once again, thank you very much. Uh, everyone, go check out all of the things that Matt does, even the ones about race cars, because people dig that stuff. It's cool. You know, a hundred and fifty million people watch every week. Can't be that bad, surely. Right. Yeah, but okay. 150 million people watch soccer too, and that's a load of garbage. Let, don't get started. <laughs> don't I did you it. Start. I went don't there. Don't you start because Graham lives down the road from you, and he he does but down he does the road. Football, he's like six hours soccer. away. What the fuck's he gonna do to me? Anyway, I'll get on a plane and come and kick your ass, young man. <laughs> young man, you got me by what? How? So you're 34? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when's your birthday? August. August, so you're going to be 35 this year. Yeah. So you got me by a year and a half. Still older than you. you right. son of a bitch. But <laughs> before we start arguing anymore, I'm going to sign off because some of us have got parties to get to. You I'm enjoy Matt your Willis. day. And Matt, thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Willis. I'm out of here. Thank you, sir. Good night. Mm. Are you tired of the same old pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 4,000 hours of the best pro wrestling events from over 110 of the biggest names in the industry from over 15 countries around the globe. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv.